Let's see if we can get some uh, information from Nabila Ramdani, who is a journalist who's interviewed Mama Gaddafi and indeed members of the family. Uh, good afternoon from us. Good afternoon. Um, I, I always start by wondering whether anything I hear is quite true uh, in these situations, both when it comes to Pakistan, events there and perhaps events in Libya. I mean, do we really believe that Gaddafi's um, uh, brother or his son has been killed and that grandchildren have been killed? Did it? I mean, what evidence do we have that this is true? Well, absolutely. I think we have, that's why we have to be extremely cautious about, you know, information coming out of um, from Libyan officials. Uh, it won't be the first time since uh, the Gaddafi regime, uh, you know, is using uh, propaganda through words uh, and indeed PR in order to bolster support uh, around the regime. Mm -hmm. And the immediate uh, reaction after the announcement was made um, was that uh, people grew uh, more and more angry, not only in Tripoli, but also in the West part of the country um, and, sh and showed more defiance towards, uh, you know, Western um, military interference. Um, but having said that, um, the reality is that the NATO coalition did hit a residential home um, in Tripoli, a, a home of the Gaddafis, and that's uh, the crux of the matter. Okay. The very fact that, you know, NATO is targeting um, the Libyan leader specifically is something we should be uh, concerned about because it goes, of course, beyond the remits of the uh, UN resolution 1973 yes that is true what do you how do you assess the state of play there at the moment how do you assess assess Gaddafi's strength military and economic well there has been uh, an escalation of uh, the savagery in this conflict on both sides. I mean, Gaddafi showed uh, utter recklessness a few days ago when he went as far as chasing the rebels in neighboring Tunisia. He's now in, uh, carrying out uh, an absolute uh, uh, unrelenting on onslaught on the city of Misrata. Uh, on the other hand, we have seen how NATO has uh, as well escalated its military action. Uh, you, we have seen U.S. drones uh, flying over the skies of Libya. Uh, of course, NATO has provided all sorts of logistical help to the rebels. We have SAS officers on the ground. Uh, more and more command and control facilities are being hit. And there are more than 160 strikes a day, uh, you know, um, launched by uh, NATO forces. So there, I there is a recklessness, if not a desperation, on both sides. Uh, NATO has now hit all uh, the easy targets, but uh, Gaddafi is, of course, not capitulating. Right. What happens next? Well, what happens next is uh, that there is definitely a stalemate uh, going on. Uh, no side is giving up. Uh, but what is happening is that Russia and China have now... Um, I mean, they have been opposed from the start to the military intervention. Uh, they are now uh, very strongly condemning uh, NATO's uh, actions in the sense that, that it's going beyond, as I said, the, uh, the initial aim of the uh, UN Resolution 1973, which, let's not forget, was aimed at protecting uh, civilians from a potential onslaught on Benghazi. And increasingly, the Arab League is now distancing itself from uh, NATO actions because so of what's going on elsewhere in so the So you're world. saying that NATO will run out of support, international support for its actions? Absolutely, especially when we have clear evidence of an actual massacre going on in Syria and when uh, where President Bashar al-Assad is giving as much time as he, li as he likes to change his ways, but he's clearly determined to carry out his uh, sinister crackdown on civilian populations. So there's a clear double standard uh, going on there, and that's why NATO I I is losing support uh, over uh, time. Nabila Ramdani, thank you uh, for your time. She's a journalist.